Hi, welcome back to Dad Call. It is Thursday, the 16th of January, 2020, just about 1 p.m. Recording this uh, to talk about life and the pursuit of happiness and all that in my own special way. I have recently been trying to recap in my head the events that have occurred since the last Dad Call. And I'm reminded, as always, that I uh, I have a problem with time dilation, where something that really didn't take that long to, uh, you know, wasn't wasn't that long ago, or didn't take that long to make, or whatever, was way longer. Uh, sometimes it goes the other way, where something feels like it was yesterday uh, when it was a week ago, or feels like it was a week ago when it was yesterday. Like sometimes both ends can happen. I guess it really just depends on what it is. But uh, I'll, I'll give you an example. Recently, we sat down season three, episode three of Map Crap, and that felt like it was a long digression away from Toddborn. And in reality, it was only three days because three. And even then, I had still been able to get a little bit of work done on Toddborn in one or two of those three days. So it wasn't like I was completely absent from the project. But still, when I came back to it later that day uh, after playing it, um, or after playing all the map crap submissions, I mean, I came back to Toddburn and I was like, what? I don't even remember anything about this project. <laughs> so I don't know. It was a little fucked up, but uh, I, I got back into the groove fairly quickly, which is nice because uh, obviously I'm also overcoming a sickness. So there was that to consider. But uh, generally, I feel pretty good about the work ethic that I've still been able to display. Stuff like... Um, you know, one of the things that I was thinking about recently is just excuses, right? And, and uh, adversity really brings out a lot of excuses in people. And uh, the idea that you can stay composed and, and stay productive despite all of the uh, very legitimate complaints that you may have about your life uh, or any given situation, you know, that, that is a very rare trait to see in people. And so I, I try to embody that when I can because I feel like that is a desirable outcome. It's desirable to take the uh, example of, um, I guess, like, one of the things that made me think about this is watching a, a Thorin video where he was explaining clutch players and uh, people who could play well under pressure in an esports context. Now, obviously, I'm just talking about it in a much more domestic, you know, mundane context of you're sick, so or you're angry or you're, you know, whatever in some sort of bad mood or bad way physically or mentally. And, uh, your temperament can't completely control your ability to work. It certainly affects it. And you have to acknowledge that and you have to be realistic about it, but somehow you got to balance the realistic acknowledgement of it with the will to maintain, uh, you know, consistent output and finding consistency in the face of adverse reality is not easy. And, well, the thing is, I say not easy, but I don't know if I really believe that. I, I think it isn't easy if you don't already know what consistency looks like. But at least if you're used to something, like if you built those habits that I talked about in some of the previous dad cause, if you're consistent already and something stops you from being consistent, that's completely external, like a sickness or whatever. Like, yes, you can take steps to live a healthier lifestyle so you don't get sick as often. But the sickness is like uh, maybe something that's more completely external in theory, like uh, the death of a family member or some sort, some other sort of bereavement. Obviously, that's crazy, you know, serious. But if you imagine for a second that that was, you know, in any way your fault when it was somebody you definitely didn't have any uh, issues with in, in this particular case and, and you just suddenly they, they end up like having a tragic accident or something that's of course going to affect you and affect your ability to be consistent with your output and so finding a way to I guess provide that uh, you know not, not necessarily saying that you should work through that that sort of environment but understanding like giving yourself a pass basically when you know that the situation is serious but not giving yourself a pass when you know you could be doing more that's more uh, what I'm getting at, I guess. So it's a clunky example, but, uh, in the case of a sickness, like there's things that you could realistically do and time that you could realistically put in despite this situation you find yourself in. So even removing any responsibility for getting sick from the equation, like you shouldn't have gone out when you were, uh, you know, underdressed or something in the middle of winter, like, yeah, of course that's going to impact your health negatively. So, or, you know, whatever situation, whatever kind of lifestyle you may lead, 
impacts your health, obviously. But if you ignore that for a second, you just look at the situation that you're in right now and you say, well, I'm sick right now. That shouldn't stop you from doing any work at all, but it is going to necessarily have an effect on your ability to maintain some sort of uh, consistent output, right? So maybe you'll work for less hours or maybe your work will be less focused or maybe you'll have to redo some sloppy work that you did later on when you're feeling better. Uh, but any number of those situations is preferable to not getting any work done at all because you, that still implies that you got work done. So there is that. The other thing that I've been thinking about outside of being sick and uh, working through that is, again, sort of uh, going back to the topic I started earlier about time dilation. It's time management, obviously, is a big deal. I talked about this already in a couple of dad cause, but I didn't really explain. It. I don't feel like I explained myself very well beyond explaining the necessity of building habits and stuff. Uh, managing time is one of those things that you really want to, uh, you definitely want to place a high importance on, a premium on doing it, but you also want to be flexible enough that you can uh, make it very clear to yourself when something is not working and make it very clear to yourself when something is working but needs to be tweaked in order to get that full potential, right? So it's kind of like any environment where you're making some sort of creative concept, you want to be able to say something to the effect of, uh, you know, I'm, I'm working on this project, right? And, and this something about my process isn't working. Uh, but is it because the concept itself of this process is bad? Or is it because I'm just not doing it right? Um, so just like if you were trying to have an in-game cinematic, there's ways that you can do that well and ways that you can do that not so well. And it's sort of the same thing about your process with how you approach work and how you approach time management as well. You know, maybe waking up at 6 a.m. every day doesn't work for you like it does for me. In that event, you have to find an alternative. But if you're finding difficulty waking up at 6 a.m. and going to bed at 10 p.m. Uh, and it's more be based on your execution of that, like you're... Uh, doing something really intense before bed uh, in terms of like, you know, looking at a screen without using flux or anything like that. Um, you know, some sort of blue light inhibitor. Uh, maybe there's certain things that you're doing that are negatively impacting your chances of making that technique work. And maybe there's things that you could be doing that would improve your chances that by, by not doing, you're not necessarily negatively impacting them, but it's like ground you could gain if you work in that sense, or that like the obvious example in t the terms of the sleep uh, concept is melatonin, taking some melatonin or uh, something like that, or just not eating before bed or something, you know, a couple hours before bed, you make sure you don't eat. Um, some people find that uh, eating when they wake up is a nice way for them to immediately perk up and, and get some work done, or at least have the energy to do so. Uh, whereas other people find that eating in the morning slows them down. So there's ways that you can take any sort of technique that you're using as ancillary to, or perhaps integral to the process of trying to manage your time better, manage your sleep better, manage your productivity better, your energy levels. Um, there's all sorts of things that you could do in uh, like an entire gradation of ways to uh, go about that, I think. And so I guess one of the reasons why I felt like further explaining that concept is generally people who don't manage their time well. And I know this from experience as somebody who very rarely managed managed their time. Well, you know, just a couple of years ago, my time management skills were terrible. Um, map crap still exposes me for that, but that's mostly because I'm not necessarily interested in just making a, a simple map. I'm trying to find a way to make maps that in do in the creation process of that map. I also make some assets that I can use in something else, or I explore some concepts that I can use somewhere else. So it's a little bit more than just a map grab for me. It's also like a tool for improving my technique or my asset pool or something like that. But outside of that, you know, my time management is pretty good, obviously. My work ethic is pretty high and my output is consistent. So no, not really many complaints there. But if you look at like people who don't do that tend to feel like they can't ever do that or it's really out of reach. Like it's an impossible goal to always go to sleep at the same time and always wake up at the same time or within some sort of consistent range uh, or something like that. Like they already feel discouraged just by the, the concept of the goal in the first place. 
And so how could they ever feel like they could get anything done in that environment? They almost defeat themselves before they've even given themselves a chance to dis, you know, determine whether or not that is the case. So that's like one example. Um, and so I wanted to explain that there's so many different avenues you could go with this, that it's actually the only thing that's really limiting your ability in this case at, at the foundation level, the only thing that's stopping you from at least trying and considering whether or not you could get it done is your own like defeatist mentality in that sense, if indeed that is a cause for concern. So, uh, you know, a lot of people don't have this problem, but I would say most people do. And this is not just when it comes to time management, but it's also when it comes to literally anything. Um, you know, for example, for a long time, I thought, well, there's no way that I could ever make graphic graphical assets. And I still don't consider myself artistic in a visual sense. I don't think that I can really, uh, you know, create art from scratch, but I can certainly create kip ashes out of terrain and stuff like that. And uh, the dead doodads and whatnot are probably the most original artistic things that I do, even though those are basically kip ashes. Um, and I've learned a lot of skills and, and mastered a lot of things related to those. And that's something that I do. That's a very integral aspect of my process for creating content now. And so that's an example where I was dead wrong. I definitely could do that, but for the longest time, even during, uh, the beginning of inconsummate, right. You know, for one, I didn't think that I could make AI (laughs) big fucking surprise there. Uh, but another thing I didn't think I could make graphics. And so, you know, starting that project off and uh, trying to make those graphics, uh, made it very clear to me that there there was avenues for this. There's tools that I could use. There's uh, techniques that I could uh, try out and add to my repertoire. And these are skills that I could indeed master or at the very least become proficient in, even despite the fact that I don't feel like I've ever been able to demonstrate artistic skill uh, before then. And certainly the artistic skill that I do demonstrate now is, um, well, let's just say it's all like, reverse engineered it's not really uh the the process is not really an artist's process as far as i've seen most artists it's really one of those processes that's like just find something that works and try to stick with it and maybe you you can start to look for a better process if the work that you're producing is become substandard or something like that like you might stumble upon a better process which i guess is probably universal but for the most part i end up uh I end up not really considering many different ways to improve my process when it comes to that sort of stuff. Because for me, it's just, it's so arcane that when I can finally get something that looks half decent, I'm like, okay, this is, let's stick with this for now. And so that is probably a a poor mindset to have in that sense, because you really should be trying to reinvent it until it feels like there's no value you could get from reinventing it. Um, Whereas I'm sure there's a lot of value that I could get from taking a more critical eye to my art and uh, the art that I produce. But the fact that I can produce art at all, whereas before I didn't think I could at all, is a revelation and a half in and of itself. And so that's like my go-to example. Anytime somebody tells me that they can't do something, it's like the same thing with coding. I'm not really great at coding right now. I'm probably uh, worse at coding than I am at art, but that doesn't mean that I can't be better. And I way better now than I was, you know, two years ago or something. So you can always be better. You can always improve in skills, just like with time management. Even if your time management skills are horrible, that doesn't mean that they're going to stay horrible. You know, it's a, it's kind of like this weird fallacy where we just assume that we're going to stay the same. Uh, and you, I guess you are in a sense, if you'd never actively try to pr- improve you, any changes that happen aren't going to be from your own will because you won't have had you won't have exerted any of your agency to uh, make any changes so i guess what i'm getting what i'm boiling it down to in so many words is just exert your agency and try to play around with the skill and see what you can come up with and uh maybe whatever you produce will not be useful at all but what you'll have learned along the way that's the real treasure there that's the real reward So, uh, yeah, I guess the real reward is the skills we learned along the way. That's sort of it. A nice way to encapsulate my thoughts on the, uh, the idea. And I just want to encourage people to experiment with things that they're not sure if they will work, but it's better than trying nothing (laughs) better than not trying anything, I guess. Um, so yeah, I would, uh, I would say that that is the case. It doesn't matter how old or young you are. It doesn't matter how set in your ways you are, as long as you're, uh, willing to, be proven uh, wrong in some aspect or another, then you should be good, I think. So keep on trucking, keep on trying to improve. Keep on doing it. And uh, eventually you will become... What's that guy, Shia LaBeouf? 
yeah, eventually you become him. Don't let your uh, dreams be dreams or whatever he says. So uh, sickness aside, past while or so has been pretty good. Past week has been pretty productive. We're getting into a regular groove where uh, we're able to do like podcasts once a week so far. I know it's only been like two or three weeks, but you get the idea. Uh, we're able to do all these mod streams still daily, which is nice. We did two yesterday, which is pretty cool. Um, and yeah, coming up on uh, fraud night this Saturday. I'm looking forward to that because that means we'll be able to play around with those bots. Uh, hopefully a lot of people can make it for those. That'll be fun. And uh, otherwise we'll have a uh, an excellent time looking for big maps. That's what I've been doing. Another thing that I've been doing when I haven't been working on Toddborn is I've been looking for big CSGO maps or at least fun CSGO maps to play with bots that I could imagine playing with, uh, you know, on fraud night or something. Uh, we got a couple of them that are contenders, but uh, nothing that I've settled on just yet. Unfortunately, a lot of them have pathfinding problems and honestly, Counter-Strike bots, man, what a mess they are in a code base level. What a mess they must be on a code base level because I can't even tell them to buy pistols. And if I try to make it so that they spawn with certain items, they don't even buy weapons. It like turns off their ability to buy weapons or something. So that's amazing. Really happy that that's the case. Oh boy. So uh, yeah, got to find some way to uh, go in and actually mod the game and create my own uh, plugin and, and walk people through how to load the plugin. There's like a tool that you can use called uh, Miggy, I think, or Maggie or something, Magi. I don't remember. Um, I'll have to look it up again. But essentially you create a plugin or an, uh, an add-on and uh, you load the add-on through this uh, executable file that you place in your Counter-Strike folder and you can only use offline servers with this or, or uh, private servers, I should say. You can't use this in matchmaking for obvious reasons. But this would allow me to like add new weapons and uh, do some stuff like that. So that would at least be interesting. But I don't know how I would manage to edit bots through that. I don't know if anybody's done that. Much like in Warcraft 3, when I was going into Hive Workshop and a bunch of Discord servers and asking people about AI, nobody had any idea what the fuck I was talking about. Nobody had any idea how to do any of the stuff that I wanted. Pretty much the same thing in CSGO. People are like... Yeah, uh, some people have edited these. They told me to like, look at some files that I haven't looked at yet, so maybe there's some use there. But I'm just messing around with the bot profiles DB file. Uh, <laughs> has not led to great results beyond being able to rename them really dumb shit. So you can at least look forward to getting killed by bot Todd and bot Rimtech Combat. So check that out uh, on Instagram, of course. Um and I don't think that's every, I think that really is everything. I don't think there's anything else that I wanted to mention that I've been doing lately. So uh, long live uh, Toddborn, of course. Happy to uh, continue working on that project. Should be a fun one to release on the 30th. So keep your eyes peeled. And what else? Um, nothing. Toddborn and then going back to Hydra. Maybe Stormborn. Maybe uh, get an early start on Inconsummate. Of course, uh, Mapcrap will kick off on the 1st of February. We will be doing a, uh, a very exciting uh, full toilet Valentine's Day one. So there's that as well. So uh, stay tuned for that, man. Just uh, just keep your mouth peeled for that one. Your lips pursed. All right. Bye. <laughs>